Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Shabbat in your home. It's another week and we have the opportunity to gather together and welcome the Sabbath. Yes, this is our favorite time of the week as a family. We get to all come together, slow down, welcome the presence of the Lord and rest. Just as the Lord commanded us to do, we set aside this time each week and are so grateful for all of you who join us and do the same. And dad is back in town this week. We are so excited to have him and mom lead us in the blessings. Let's join them at the table. Wow, it is Shabbat again. Time to rest. I can, t- <laughs> I can tell you our busy schedules look forward yes. to this day every week. It has been very busy. I don't know about your house, but this really is a day that I believe, or we believe, that the Lord has set aside for the restoration of family. You know, it's called Shabbat, cease, rest, nada, nothing, zero, big goose egg, just kind of recover. But there's blessings as well for observing and celebrating this. And I want to just start tonight with a, a brief reading from one of my favorite sections of Sabbath scripture. It's found in Isaiah chapter 58. And starting in verse 9, it says, Then you will call on the Lord, and I will answer, he says. You'll cry for help, and I will say to you, Here I am. And if you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, And if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noon day. There's so much more here. It'll really bless you. Sometime when you're sitting at your table with your family, go through Isaiah 58. What an amazing, amazing chapter. It talks about enjoying the blessings of your father, Jacob. And we just came through Passover last month, and I could show you, but we don't have time right now. This isn't the teaching time. We're welcoming the Sabbath, but you might say, well, Jacob's not my father. Well, yes, he is, because we are all spiritual sons of Abraham, whether a natural branch or a wild branch, we've been grafted in together to this kingdom of the king of Israel. And he said that he's Lord of the Sabbath. So dear, why don't you light the candles and let's welcome the king to our home. Let your light shine. Come on, lights, there we go. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu Le'od ala goyim v'natan lanu et Yeshua meshichenu or ha'olam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You've sanctified us with your word. You've given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and you have called us to be a light unto the world. Thank you for this Shabbat. And as my husband was reading, we... We just look to you this Shabbat for answers. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that you are a Father that answers our prayers. So, Father, we just ask you during this Shabbat, as we just enter into your presence in this special time of fellowship with you, we ask that you give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding and knowledge, Father God, for the things that... um, Each of us is uh, overcoming situations that we're overcoming in our life. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us answers. Thank you. Thank you that we have ears to hear your voice. In Yeshua's name, amen. Hmm. Amen. You were picking up on that one verse, which is one of my favorites. He said, you'll call on me and I will say to you, here I am. Hineni. There's so much there. So tonight, Lord, we call on your name. And he said, I'll answer. Here I am. 
So Lord, we invite you into this sacred place set apart now with the lighting of the candles and remembering the covenant. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You've brought forth the fruit from the vine. Lord, we celebrate you tonight, the fruit of the covenant, uh, your blood represented in this red cup. And so we thank you that we have been set apart from the rest of the world. We've been set apart from the curse. And Lord, we have been given the most precious gift tonight, your presence. We give you thanks in Yeshua's name. And the bread, our traditional challah, because Passover has passed over us, and now we return to the traditional challah, the woven loaf signifying the folding of our arms across our chest to rest and to relax. Also the symbol of his body that was not taken, but given for us. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the land. Lord, we thank you that you are the bread of heaven, you are the bread of life, and you were born in that city of bread, Bet Lechem, house of bread. We celebrate you, we give you thanks for your body given for us, our provision in the name of Yeshua. Hmm. Kala is so good. So from our house to yours, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the living God. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the
let the weight of your glory let the weight of your glory fall and we do not seek your hand Lord we only seek your face oh God we want to know you we want to see you reveal your glory in this Your glory, let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory, let the weight of your glory fall. It's our prayer tonight that wherever you're watching from, that the Lord's presence, that His glory would fill your room, fill your house, fill your car, fill your work, your cubicle, your bedroom, that His presence would come and rest on you tonight. That is our prayer. That is this prayer, especially on Shabbat. In the name of Yeshua. Before we hear from Joel and Shay tonight, we wanted to take a moment and offer you an opportunity to give. Yes, we hear from so many of you that you consider Shabbat in your home, your home congregation. And we are so thankful to have you. Whether you want to send in a tithe, an offering, or a one-time gift, or even a monthly partnership, you can do so by going to ShabbatInYourHome.com. We truly cannot do this without you, as we rely on your support to make these online services happen each week. Again, you can go to ShabbatInYourHome.com and give. Now let's join Joel and Shay as they share with us about how the Lord brought them together for such a time as this. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in and watching us on Shabbat in Your Home. And tonight we're doing things a little different. We're going to continue the series that we have been just getting to know the family and how mm -hmm. God ordained our family to do what we're currently doing now. and in ministry. Ministry and yeah. in the nations and... So, all the things. All the things. So I guess today <laughs> you're going to hear a little bit more from me than just talking about, hey, thank you for your donation. And what we do, <laughs> thank you for your donation so we can continue to uh, run the ministry and mm -hmm. to do the things the Lord has called us to do. But yeah. So tonight you're going to hear a little more about our hearts and what brought us together. So I feel like we should start at the very beginning of us because people assume that we grew up together oh, yeah. because we grew up in the Messianic movement. Well, I did. Messianic movement's fairly small. And while... I did too until I was yeah. five and then we moved to Chicago. And then you grew up in the church. Yeah, it's a word of faith church. Yeah, but like I grew up knowing who Paul Wilbur was because obviously my dad was Joel Chernoff. If you, if you don't know, he was in a sing, singing group called Lamb. But the first time that you really saw me, <laughs> that I saw you, because I didn't remember seeing you this time. Do you want to tell the story? Yeah, you sure. tell from your perspective, and then I'll tell it. I'll tell you the right perspective. <laughs> but we have to keep it short, because we've got a lot to get to. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so tell yeah, the so first. Yeah, so I was, again, we are let's say this time. 2004 is December. 2004, so at that, I just got done working at the gym for a couple of years at Gold's Gym. I was a personal trainer, and... I told my dad, it's like, I don't think this is really for me. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for me to, you know, get back into ministry and just travel with you. So I started traveling with my dad, you know, selling product and anything that needed to get done, that's what I would do. And so I was with my brother. We were in Orlando at one of the uh, Messianic conferences, mm -hmm. Southeast Regional. And I was like, who's that? He was at the product table. I was at the yeah. product table. And I saw Shay walk by with the guy. I was like, who's that guy? And who's the this guy, girl? Yeah. <laughs> More importantly, you wanted to know who the girl was. So. That's right. <laughs> I said, well, I was like, who's that girl? Who's that guy? I was like, you know. 
Yeah. It was interesting. And then uh, I was like, oh, I guess there are some, you know, cute girls in the movement. And <laughs> <laughs> maybe I need to get more involved with what's going on in the movement, you know, being a young guy, you know. I travel with my dad. You were looking for your wife. I was looking for my wife. But what's crazy is then at that same conference, I, I don't know if it was the same night, I don't remember, we were at dinner, and I was with the guy that I was dating at the time and my family. We were just sitting at a table, and Paul comes walking up, and Joel wasn't with him, but Paul comes up, and of course he comes over and says, hi, put his arm around me, and hey, and I give him a hug, and I introduce Paul to the guy that was next to me. And uh, Paul looked at him and looked at me, and he said, hey, are you guys engaged? And the guy said, no, we're just dating. And then Paul looked at me, literally, I remember he put his hand on my shoulder and said, then I want you to meet me, my son, Joel. <laughs> and then he looked at the guy and was like, hey, if she's got no ring, she's fair game. <laughs> Which I'm like, it's just so dad now that I know oh, yeah. <laughs> But it's crazy because like, obviously at the time we laughed it off, but mm -hmm. that was in December. And then we officially met Joel and I the following summer at the Messiah Conference. And both of our dads were singing on the same night, but you guys had happened to be just arriving that day, and I happened to be walking outside while you're... It was a hot, humid day yeah. in July. It was so hot. And, and I wasn't feeling well. I remember, too, getting off the airplane, and I was just like, oh. But I was excited to see Jonathan Burness and catch up with him at the conference. Yeah. And I saw them. I happened to be walking outside when they pulled up, and so I ran up and gave his dad a hug, and I said hi to Paul, and I didn't. we didn't say anything. I don't remember. I don't think... We even acknowledge really each other. I was like, what's up, shorty? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I am shorter. But, um, I, uh, no, I said something about your shoes or not? No, that wasn't yet. Uh, that wasn't yet. Uh, but I did remember being like, oh, mental note. Like, he's really cute. Paul's son's cute. I've never seen Paul's son here. Like, what? And so anyway, so that night after we met, you know, I had to go, go back and get ready for the evening because I was sitting with my dad. Ready. I didn't take six hours. But I did put a little extra time into getting ready because mm. I was like, I'm, I'm going to have make sure my dad, like, introduces us. Oh, yeah. Not that I'm trying to orchestrate it or anything, but anyway. Mm -hmm. so, um, so anyway, backstage, before the evening service, both of our dads were singing, and we were both back there. Yeah. And so my dad went up to your dad, or your dad went up to my dad, or I, something. I, I remember I was, I was getting my dad's guitar out his case and he said dad introduce us oh you said dad introduce no, us you you told oh, me i was dad. like you said it too no, i'm sorry <laughs> i heard the whole thing i was just playing cool oh you heard me say to introduce mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. whatever I was, really yep. oh i don't so know then dad, i thought then i was then playing I, it real and your, cool and your dad was like hey hey paul let's introduce our kids and he's like oh okay so then introduced us talked and then i had to put you know a lot of times before i had to go put the guitar on the stage for my dad and all that and so then I was a, f a faithful son. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where we first met backstage. And then uh, I was supposed to sit with Burnus, Jonathan Burnus. He was saving me a seat. And I ended up sitting with you during the, uh, the conference. And then the rest is history. We exchanged yeah. phone numbers and... That was it. Yeah. I mean, there's, it wasn't totally, I mean, well, that was the beginning of, yeah. of everything. And well, for we, time's sake. You know. Yeah, for time's sake. Okay. Because we have five minutes and 37 seconds left. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, really, we began a long distance relationship. And there's a lot of other pieces there. Oh, yeah. How God really, like, we first just started talking purely as friends because he was traveling with his dad. Um, and I was living in Nashville at the time. And yeah, it just sort of slowly developed. And I remember... Like, people always say, like, did you know right when you met him that, like, he was the one? And I don't know how you felt. You but definitely knew, yeah. No, no, I, <laughs> I feel like you knew, but... I knew something was different. That's what I was going to say. I yeah, felt when like... When I gave you a hug goodbye, and it was like, something's different about this girl. Really? Because that's what your mom said about when she hugged your dad. That's really sweet, because he didn't... You weren't here when we were filming that, but that's mm -hmm. really cool. Um, yeah, it always felt like there was something different. Like, I wanted to get to know more, you know, about you. And so... Um, what was cool, though, is, like, I feel like from the beginning, we really felt God's hand on the whole relationship. Like, his name is Joel. My dad's name is Joel. I always said I wanted to, like, marry someone like my dad. And, you know, it's just crazy that God gave me someone with the exact name <laughs> as my dad. Um, he's like, I'm going to make it really easy. My middle name is David, and that's your uncle's my name. My uncle's name. So God was so like, I'm trying uncle. to make it really easy for you, Shay. This is your husband. And um, what I was going to say is what's so important, I think, is, you know, these days people are so quick to jump into relationships and, oh, I like this person or we have chemistry. Everyone talks about, like, chemistry and the vibe and all this stuff. But, hey, we were vibing, you know. <laughs> but what's more important than all of that is knowing that God's hand is in it mm -hmm. because I feel like throughout life and marriage, we've been married 17, 17 years, years this April. year. And um, 
knowing that God's hand is in it, that God has orchestrated it. Because you go through ups and downs, and it's like at those times where, you know, the devil tries to creep in and maybe, you know, make you doubt things or make you question yourself or whatever that might be, whatever you might be going through. Um, to me, it's always given me such a peace knowing that, like, God put us together. God's got it no matter what we go through. And we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through because you're the best person that God had for me and vice versa. I kept trying to tell you that, you know. <laughs> and I feel like before we wrap, I, I feel like I, I want to share really quickly, like when when we got to L.A., because I feel like that truth, we always knew that, but when we were living in California, like well, that had know, to become— We did our vows you know, for better or for worse. Yeah. L.A. was better times and worse times. It was both. <laughs> and we stuck it through, and just being in there was almost, being there was like a, you know, like some people say is the front lines. It's like where culture changes the rest of the, the U.S. and um, the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So and that's, God had that's, called yeah, us. We had moved why. there. Just mm-hmm. to give them backstory, we had moved to Los Angeles. God called us there. And, yeah, we had some major highs, major lows. Yeah. Yeah, some great, it was some great times. And, but, you know, after a few years, you know, when you're working, you know, in the secular TV, you had a great job with Extra and, you know, being very successful, then when they were making some cuts and you weren't doing that anymore, <clears throat> and trying to figure out, hey, God, why'd you call us here when we're not, you know, doing the show anymore? And then it was all on me, on my ministry salary, which, um, Living in Los Angeles and not, their taxes. not quite enough. It was not quite enough. And, uh, we were really, really short. Like, we didn't know how we were going to pay our bills each month. Yeah, it was a lot scary. of hot dogs and beans. It's like, all right, how can we eat for five bucks? <laughs> for real. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, and, and it, was, it was going through so much anxiety from like the pressure and just mm-hmm. the hustle and just, you know, to be out there and to be known, you really have to get out and about and that costs money. And so, just like, Lord, you know, I asked mm-hmm. him, why would you call us here? Why are we here? And then he reminded me, obviously I won't get too much into it, he reminded me when I was 14 years old at a, uh, a youth quake live service in Jacksonville. You know, <laughs> all these kids were crying, send me to the nations, send me to the nations. I was like, Lord, I've been to the nations with my dad. I was like, Lord, send me to California, like, send me to Los Angeles. And it's kind of just joking, but with the, having a conversation with the Lord, but he reminded me, when you were 14, you said you wanted to be here. I was like, wow, I did. And so that kind of gave me a little, that, even though it, was, it gave me a lot of encouragement saying, wow, okay, so God has us. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't, even though we prayed, we fasted for three days before we made the move, like we knew that we were supposed to move. We were supposed to move. Mm-hmm. And so just going back to that, it was like, okay, you know, right now we're going through a valley, a low point, but we know God has our back. And even, it got so bad to where my dad was like, Joel, you know, you guys were there for, it was at that time, it was like four years um, you guys did some amazing things, you know, made yeah. a, you know, you made a difference in the culture and even though it was very small, but we still like did, you know, we were part of big things and doing big things, but, um, it's, you know, it's time to come back. And I was just like, with tears in my eyes, I was just like, we can't, we're not going back until God says, Hey, you know, your time is up mm-hmm. and, um, it's time to, it's time to go back to Jacksonville. Yeah. And it was just like, and it was something that I was just like, I remember just like, mm-mm. it'd be the easy way out. And it sounds, it makes sense, it takes all the pressure off me, mm-hmm. but I didn't have peace about it. Yeah. And I think that's like, it goes back to like knowing that God ordained this. We knew that God had ordained our steps, told us to move to California. We didn't know why. We didn't know the full purpose, but we knew that that was what God had called us to do, number one. Number two, um, we, something that, and I learned this from my dad um, growing up, that like, if you feel like God has called you to do something or go somewhere or whatever that might be, or step out in faith, you do that until the orders change, until the assignment changes from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And no matter how hard it got for us, we knew two things. We knew one, that God had ordained us and put us together and that we were going to get through it together. And number two, we weren't moving until God told us, no matter how hard it was. Very hard. And like the big thing is like, we don't want to be running from something. We don't want to be running because something's hard because Mm -hmm. we also know that like you run from something that's hard, you're going to just find something else that's hard because nothing ends up, nothing is easy, you know? Um, Especially nowadays. Yeah. And so people finding a great job now with all these people letting people go. We're like, God, we want to finish this season out strong. Whatever this season looks like, whenever you want it to end. We want to be on top of the hill, the mountain, not at the low part of yeah, the valley. Yeah, when we leave. And that's one of, that was a great thing is we stuck it out mm-hmm. and 
you know, people gave us money that never gave us money before. We would get that like, knew us for years mm-hmm. and helped pay our, uh, our rent and everything like that. Yeah. So it was out of nowhere. People would be like, it was God like told me to send by us to you. It wasn't really like it's crazy. Oh, here you go. And it gave God, gave God an opportunity to really show up. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, like, that was excited because we were like, wow, we're actually living by faith. I feel yeah. like it was like the first time we were actually like living by faith. Like this is cool. This is what I always preached about. And yeah. what people always, you know, preached to on, mm-hmm. on uh, at stage to us and you know whatever at different messages. You know, yeah. live by faith. Live by faith. It's like yeah. no, live by faith. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's. I mean. I think that's just something to kind of wrap it up. There's a lot more that we could talk about here. Well, at least, but then God, you know, the, the story, I almost feel it's almost like Job mm-hmm. who had, who had this success and then he took it away and kind of like, all right, now what, now what are you going to do? Are you going to yeah. stay faithful with what I'm telling you to do? And then he not only restored it even to where when we left Los Angeles, even during, you know, the COVID and yeah. everything that was going on, like he had way more opportunities than, you know, we ever had before yeah. and then, Everything that I was doing, uh, was God was yeah. really blessing as well. So we left, you know, on the top of things, and mm-hmm. it was it was amazing. And it, we felt more like you know, God ordained it, and I feel like that's the way God wants us to leave. Yeah, you know, each season, each season is like on top, not feel like you know we didn't do it. Yeah. So stick it out, you know, stick with it. Sometimes it's hard; it doesn't mm-hmm. make sense financially, doesn't make sense health wise. It didn't make sense. I mean, we were tested on a yeah. daily. But when our marriage uh, mm-hmm. stayed strong as we continued to communicate with the Lord together and pray things throughout. And we just, you know, communication's key. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully that, like, encourages you. I know this, we kind of gave you uh, some different pieces of our story and things that God has told us throughout the years. But hopefully that encourages you if you're watching tonight and maybe you're in the middle of a season where you're like, God, what is next? Or, wow, this is, this is not fun. I need to yeah. find, like, a quick way out. You know, just just really seek the Lord, and when He gives you that peace, maybe you're waiting for that release. Like, don't don't move until you have that release from Him, right, sure. um, because it will definitely be worth it, and He will reward you for your faithfulness to Him. He always does. Yeah. And we're now we're mm-hmm. back with our parents and with my parents. And two my kids brother, later, and two kids later, we don't yeah. have a we don't have a white uh, picket fence. No, but, we don't you know, have a fence yet. We, we do have, actually we need a fence. fence. You have we have alligators really in our <laughs> pond. Okay. Behind okay. 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 <laughs> All right, guys. Should we Shabbat Shalom and, and say good night? All right. Shabbat okay. Shalom. It's, it's time to, you know, party with our family. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat everyone. Shalom. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope to see you again right here next week. Yes. And if you have a testimony that has come out of Shabbat in your home, we would love to hear from you. You can comment directly on this video or email us at info at wilburministries.com info at wilburministries.com. That's right. (laughs) Let's close with the ironic blessing, so please gather around with you and your family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha, ya'er Adonai panevelecha v'chonecha. Isa Adonai Panadelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom Bashem Yeshu in the name of Jesus our Messiah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.